almost impossible for him to take me down and what I'm going to do keep keeping pressure on the overhook keeping pressure on the head I'm going to just donkey kick my leg back as hard as I can and it comes out and just to complete the sequence because even this isn't a particularly great spot I'm going to just come over the top take a head and arm control drag my leg back cool so we do all the right things and this time ask your partner this is a feedback exercise, because there's so many different things going on here. Ask your partner, um, am I compromising you here now? Over the hook, and knee out to the side. So I'll be asking, is your, is your spine position strong? No. Okay, <clears throat> is there pressure off the overhook? Uh-huh. Is my shin driving into your thigh, does it hurt? Yeah. Cool, now I know I've got it right. Big donkey kick back, keeping control of the head, sweep over to the top, I'm in like a head and arm position and just open. Is that cool? Yeah. All right, that's finally getting completely out of single. One, two, three. Is for a head on the inside, single leg. Now, in jiu-jitsu, um, it is massively discouraged for people to shoot and take a single with a head on the outside. And this is for two reasons. Um, the first one is, his Dean leaves himself open to guillotines here. The second reason is more of a, it's a safety issue uh, in that if I grab Dean's belt, I'm going to do this really gently. Yeah. 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 Okay. If I grab Dean's belt here and I sit to my bum and I did this aggressively, smash Dean's head and spine into the mat. So that's why we are always, if anyone always wonders why we're always like, head on the inside, head on the inside. That's the reason why. It's also, um, IBJJF says that's an illegal move uh, in what, at white belt level. Yeah. But and you yeah, get di like you get disqualified for doing that. Right. You can do what you like, but you get disqualified putting your head on the outside as a white belt. 
That being said, sometimes people will shoot with their head on the outside. So, Dean shoots with his head on the outside. So I have my two options here. First one we'll go over is the guillotine. So I'm going to turn this way. With this guillotine, it's not, I'm not trying to sneak my hand in. I'm not trying to, you know, nicely wrap it up. Um, Marcelo Garcia's got a great set of videos on this. He says, when you're looking for this guillotine from the head on the outside, um, you are hitting them with it. Because that's what gets, it. Like, this gives him too much time to defend. So I'm just gonna, bang. Gonna connect my hands on the other side here. And what I'm looking to do is to get my forearm over the top of his shoulder. This stops him being able to bring his um, arm over the top. I can now sit back, wrap, and then squeeze. It's super tight. So we'll start with that, and then we'll move on to a then we'll move on to a rest and switch. Sorry. Um, but this is one of those techniques. Unfortunately, if you want to drill it properly, um, you have to be quite not nice. The nice way of doing it would be to try and do it like this. You will never get it that way. Not in actual sparring. You need to go here. He's got. He's he's gone head outside. Bang. I push your hand all the way through. Arm over the top. And you need to sit and finish. Is that cool? Yeah. Um, the, the, this leg. This. No. This is because. So. Yeah. The doctor changed this into a guillotine thing, but um, I, if Dean passes to the far side, this takes the guillotine off. Yeah. Go back. <coughs> Even though I'm not protecting my guard on that side, if Dean passes to that side, go, 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 go he's tapped himself out. No, it's the, so the right leg. Ah, uh, this one. Yeah. All I'm trying to do is I've got a hook here on this side. Yeah. That stops him going this way, and this also stops him going this way. It's only by him going this way that he can escape the guillotine. This also stops him rolling as well, because one of the things, if I have a tight high elbow guillotine, and he knows he can't get around it, he might just roll to his back. Let's try and get out of it. Yeah. Don't worry too much about them, because that's a different session for a different day. The main thing to focus on is, his head's there, Smash! This is a this is a strike. Yeah? Smash! Your, arm, your hand will go all the way through. Roll your forearm over the top. Yeah? Is that cool? Yeah. If we're trying to be nice, you can do it. Almost everyone's making the same. It's not a mistake. It's that they're struggling to get their hand through. And if I'm struggling to get my hand through, that is quite difficult. It's because I didn't hit him hard enough. If I do this. My hand goes all the way through straight away. Yeah, just bang. It's like a bicep curl slash uppercut slash. <laughs> Someone come up with a good name for it, haven't um, Everybody knows. So the next thing is sometimes, let's say for whatever reason, my guillotine is not available. Often when people put their head to the outside, it's because he started with his head inside. And then he went to run the back, you know, to run the back. No. So he started with his head inside, and then he goes to run the pipe, and he drags me down, and now his head's outside. Essentially, this is the same position, yeah? But it is quite difficult to lock up a guillotine from here. Because he can put his uh, he can put his head tight against my leg, he can kill all this space. It is, now I need a different solution. And you can also do this from standing, but um, you risk hurting your partner a lot. So we're going to just do what's called a restless switch. The important thing about the restless switch is that I keep everything of Wayne on one side of me. So he can have my leg between his legs, that's fine. But I want his head, his body, everything all on one side. If he gets across to the other side, now I'm in trouble. Yeah? So, restless switch. Everything goes on one side of me. What I'm going to do, this um, looks quite complicated, but it's not. What I'm going to do is to keep him on that side, I'm going to reach through 
under, around, and grab his leg. Yeah? Keeping everything of him on, that, on one side of me. Now, I'm going to scoot my hips out and at the same time, come over to the top. One of two things will happen. Either they will hold on to the leg and they will fall, or the action, I'm dropping all of my weight through his shoulder here. It really hurts. Or he'll let go of the leg and he'll get to come out on top. You can see the effect more dramatically if you do it from standing. So look, I come here, go to rest and switch. Just watch your hand. Go here, and now I'm going to sit and smash my shoulders. Sit and rest and switch. Dead simple. Keep everything on one side, reach through under the leg, and then I'm looking to sit and smash my shoulder down. Do you have a question? Which one do you want to ask? Start from, start from the ground. Because also, this is a means of a lot of people try and pass like this as well. Yeah? This is a common position to end up in when someone's trying to pass you. Same thing, just keep everything on one side. You can't pass my guard now. And then I just take. Start, start from the ground, try and get the feeling. And if your partner's comfortable and you're comfortable, do it from a standing position, but just make sure, because what happens is, is you're here, you're holding a leg and you kind of end up smashing your face in the floor. So just do it gently and make sure your partner knows, but it's, it's, a real, it's an explosive movement. Can you do the movement without me? It's quite difficult to do it without someone actually holding you. <laughs> but I guess it looks kind of like this. So I'm here, scoot my hips and drop my shoulder to the ground. I just want to, I try and weave it through and I try and get a grip on that leg. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, scoot my hips and smash my shoulder to the floor. Is that cool? Yeah. One, two, three.